So he said it's okay, but they haven't done it. Okay, oh. Don, we um, called the meeting to order. We have some documents for review. <coughs> this West Energy. Yeah, the old one um, um, we signed and issued, and Eversource, um, we had gone through most of the uh, information, but we wanted to get a chance to look at the uh, asphalt plan. Mm -hmm. so, okay, we'll yeah, this one I'll bring it up on the screen too if we need, but it might be easier to get some eyeballs. Okay. So, it didn't show the 100 foot buffer zone on the um, Asbel plan. But you can see there, um, I would say the buffer zone probably is right below, uh, somewhere right, ar right around in there. So it would be this section of the um, uh, chain link fence. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a, uh, a good view of. Ago or two weeks ago? No, no. This is a certificate of compliance application. Oh, so this is like from last year. Oh, okay. For the access road. Right. So what you can see is how this lines up. The fence line through here uh, on the northern end sort of runs pretty even. Okay. But down the south, you can see they had an existing chain link fence, and then they were supposed to put a PIB along limit of work, so it would be, yeah, actually the 100 foot would probably be right outside that. So it, it sort of correct, it came out and around, mm -hmm. and it looks like they've just got the existing chain link fence there. <clears throat> so you're just missing like a little bump out. So I don't know if you wanted them just to put in some signage or something along there, just to, to cover up that area that should be left alone. You know, we should basically just be running something along right. like that where they're saying, well, the, the fence will act as the PIB. We didn't know if you guys wanted that brought out or... Is the, does the fence have any type of sign on it? No, but it's actually, well, basically, the fence, is the, fence is a, the fence is in the right location here, so that could act as a, as a PIB there. Um, it's just not in the right location back here. Should, it should, oh, come, okay. should come further in. It should give you that little box out right there. Further in oh, by 2 feet or 10 feet? Doesn't look like much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not much. I think the other question too was if, there, if you were going to require any signage, if you wanted some sort of around that new stream channel that was built, because we know they've already kind of mowed it down once a little bit more than they should. Okay. So if the goal is to kind of let that go natural, some signage in there might not hurt. You're talking almost, you know, about 38, 38. feet. Oh. 38. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so I think we should have <coughs> more than a little. Bit. <coughs> yeah. uh, talk to them, they'd sound like they'd be amenable to that and giving us a nice plan. That so, at that location good. where they did the work in the stream, channel, that Matt had referred to Don. Yeah, and we talked about um, that condition that talked about um, was it functioning? And they gave us the. Um, uh, the SWIP reports and one problem we had that they shouldn't have mowing there. Mm -hmm. but, um, I, think, I think the commission came away thinking it was, you know, it's fundamentally designed and that was the one issue there. Yeah, yeah no, I agree. We just don't want the mowing in there. Nope. So, all right. Okay. Let's respond to them. Give them a heads up on the status of the COC application. Okay, a few new filings this week. All right. And then Thomas, 84 Pine Island Road. This is a request for an extension permit. Yeah, I'm here. Come on up. Sorry, I didn't have time. Get my computer working enough to print out the 91 
But this is the island, and uh, we've made some substantial progress over here. And um, we've, we've got the trench completed across the island to put in the three conduit um, for the electrical and communication service. Okay. <coughs> and then uh, I apologize, I have more information about this. Um, this is relatively close to complete. There's just one other change that the snows wanted on here. And there'll be uh, the three conduit will come up to the mainland here by this telephone pole. And the electrical um, gentlemen want the conduit to end about 10 feet into the low water line of the, of the pond so that it doesn't get clogged with ice, you'll be able to drain out. My intention is to um, have a protected fiber in place from Verizon and a Comcast feed as well as an electrical, that's why the three conduits. Hopefully they'll use the same one but and leave me with a spare, but the indication was they wouldn't. So. This isn't filed yet. Oh. This will actually be filed as soon as we complete it. I, I was hoping to complete it today, but you can keep the copy of it. You can keep this copy. I have other copies if you want it. And um, and this this has a shed proposed shed spot. It'll be a, a, a kayak shed placed here. I made an agreement with the snows here. Instead of using parking in this area, he's got given me a parking and, and uh, be okay to build a shed on the easement. This is a, a it will be a deeded easement for the electrical services and uh, down the cart road, and then my access to the lake to this existing dock here on the lake edge. We also have a deep water dock over here, so that um, the the access from 61 Pine Island Road and the, the other neighbors have a car top boat ramp here mm -hmm. that's existing on a um, 25 foot right away from a property that's not included in this drawing over here. That's already there, though, right? Yep, so it's all existing. But this is where I'll be loading in and out the conduit. That's why I brought it back. Okay. Got it. Okay, so how long an extension are you looking for? Um, is the standard three years, or can I ask for longer than that? Yeah, it's three Max years. would be three. Yeah. Okay. So three years. Three years. Okay. All right, questions or comments? So, this, so just one more detail on the conduit. It should be completed before the, um, the summer season next, next year. All right. Any questions from the commission? Comments? Does the conduit go completely from island to mainland? No, I we've uh, actually gone back and forth on that quite a few times, and the conduit is not going to go across all the way. And so you'll have. So what we'll be doing is laying uh, cement half pipes on the on the uh, cable as it makes its way across to hopefully prevent any uh, intrusion from fishing and. Boats. That's why I was, so. I was a little concerned when I heard. Well, typically the water above the end of the conduit will be eight feet. So that should be pretty substantial for protection from boats. Mm -hmm. But then I want to put the cement in place to, to just ensure that it doesn't get disturbed, either, either by currents or land movement or boats or whatever. Anchors? Anchors, exactly. That's why I was hoping it would be. I was. I had. I had a initially proposed a, a corrugated pipe in the center, but the um, electrical inspector um, told me that it shouldn't be there at all. So I, the um, the cement um, actually is on a, a, a yeah. There's a detail of precast. 
It's everything that I'm using is precast. Okay, fine. Okay, I got a motion to. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I'll just move my congestion here. All right, I got a motion to approve the extension request for three years. So moved. A second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. And opposed? Okay, good luck. Thank you. So I put my name and phone number on the back here. I don't know you have a number there in case you can get us it. Uh, I'll bring in a finished version once he files it at the register with the And then you want to be able to submit the F9 permit? Exactly. That'll be good because this will show two of the docs. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Was it shocking? No. Okay, yeah, REC Hopkinton, this is Chamberlain Whalen Subdivision Roadway. The request to waive a portion of condition number 35 of the order of conditions. Good evening. So, Kathy Sherry, REC Hopkinton, Scott Goddard with Goddard Consulting, and we have Mike Macura, our site contractor from Macura Excavating. So, um, we are requesting a waiver of condition 35, um, which is part of our pre-construction deliverables of the order of conditions, which is to have signed and stamped engineering documents on the culvert design for the emergency access, as well as the Whalen crossing that's part of the chamberlain Whalen road extensions. Um, in order for us to just install a temporary crossing to allow access on the Wayland side. And we can go through what we're looking to do with you, if you want to just kind of see the extent of it. Yeah, we should do you want to use these? Use these? Okay. That'd be helpful. So we did submit all the pre-construction requirements um, to the order conditions. There's some other pre-construction the an item that comes up that makes it a little tricky is the, so the pre-construction meeting is to allow any and all work within the order of conditions scope, namely the buffer zone, but then also the crossing. So one of the things that was asked for it in the order was the specifics on the culvert designs for um, the Whalen and the center crossing. So the borings have been done. Those those culvert designs are in the final stages of of their, um, you know, the details and specs and all that. But that's still a few weeks out. We really want to capture the window before winter sets in to get into the main part of the site off of Whalen Road. So in order to build the Whalen Road crossing extension, which is what you have here, we're not ready to build the permanent crossing yet because we don't have the culvert specs. Certainly before we build the culvert spec, the culvert, you're going to have the specs per condition 35. So what we'd like to request is that condition 35 is specific to before the culverts are installed, you have the culvert designs in hand, not necessarily before any work on the, within the buffer zone of the site. So what we're proposing to do is to come in off Whalen, which is what you have in front of you, and the area that is hatched in uh, the, the tannish color would be the area that we remove the trees and strip the soils and let, put lay a temporary pipe across. There's not, there's not even really much of a stream to speak of in that location. If you remember where the black and white hatched linear feature is, that's an existing culvert, right? So, so that the main stream is already piped in this location. We would, we would just be clearing, stripping, placing a temporary pipe across the, the overflow wetland trickle that goes adjacent to it, and then put stone in over the top of it. So this would be used for machines to go in and out of the site for over the course of the next few months before the culverts are ready to be installed and the final approved crossing is placed in this location. So that's that's the primary um, you know purpose of, of our request tonight. Uh, you know we are seeking to start act the activity you know, right, right away on this. Okay. The other thing that came up that we could pro should probably discuss too is we did adjust the design of the, the main culvert on this property 
uh, through the Army Corps of Engineers in the 401 process. So DEP and the Army Corps of Engineers has approved that. We submitted that information all in the review site plans and the permits to the staff and have, you know, have a request before the commission as to whether or not that requires an amendment to your permit or if that's small enough to be kind of a minor field change. Basically, the thrust of that request is that if you remember the center culvert um, that goes between the two culvert um, cul-de-sacs, we have a wetland crossing. Mm -hmm. We had one of the abutments of the wetland crossing within the stream channel of one of the main stream threads. DEP, specifically the Army Corps didn't care, but DEP specifically asked if that abutment could be located outside of the stream channel, which we made that change. So that made that one culvert now much bigger, and then the abutment only in between. The, uh, so instead of having two abutments now within the wetland, we only have one abutment now in the wetland. So we've reduced the impact, as it were, you know, to the wetland, but it is a change in the design, consi inconsistent with the plans that you guys approved with your order of conditions. Okay. So those, those are kind of the two requests, I guess, we have before you uh, tonight. Okay. Um, Through the chair, just a quick point. Yeah, uh, it, uh, you gave us one high copy of yes. the, the, the site plan, yes. but they weren't stamped and they weren't highlighted. Could you just give us two sets? For sure. That'd be great. Yep. Okay. So, um, just so I understand it, um, this crossing. Um, that you're proposing is to allow the contractor to get on site to do site clearing outside the buffer zone areas, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. So this is the only work proposed uh, that's in the <coughs> resource area? Correct. Okay. And then all the erosion controls are in place at the site? Mm -hmm. And when the contractor gets out there, um, is he going to know where the buffer zone starts? and what areas to sit yes. out of? Yeah, we did the similar thing on the Chamberlain side. We actually flagged the 50 and 100 foot. Okay. And um, we went as far as to actually run caution tape on the entire 100 foot buffer. Okay. So. And you'll be doing that at the same procedure. Area as well. Okay. All right. And there's a waste pile in this area. As well, right? Debris uh, looks like neighbors may have been dumping stuff there, so that's getting cleared out. Correct. Everything will be exported that isn't part of the wetlands replication plan. Okay. So there'll be tree clearing. You'll install this temporary culvert. Mm -hmm. um, some soils will be removed as well. Yep. For grading purposes, always yeah, we'll strip out the top soil so that you can have a firm base to put the stone in. Okay. Um, okay. We've laid out the process on the first page, just if you're interested in it. We just kind of summarized the steps that they'll be taking. And then there will be no other work in the buffer zone until the engineering design is submitted That's to the commission. That's fine. Okay. I think I'm okay with that. Any questions or comments from the commission? No. Nope. Yes. Yes. Sure. Um, so the existing main culvert is going to remain in place, right? Correct. Correct. Um, does that need any specific protection or anything? It any? does. Okay. And how is that going to happen? Um, we plan on excavating and exposing it. It's in very poor shape. Um, we're going to evaluate the condition of it and um, backfill it with some crushed stone and support it. We want to build up the, the fill on top of it and protect it with some road plates. And that'll allow us to disperse a lot of the weight of the machines crossing it. Um, and that, that's our intent to get uh, to get access over it. Okay. Um. 
So it sounds like you're basically proposing to do all the work in here short of putting in the final design culverts. Is that accurate? Correct. We, this is a process to getting the final design stamped and uh, calculated. And now that we just completed the borings, um, we're able to accelerate that process and begin with fabrication. So um, this is a temporary measure to bridge that time. Okay. Um, so I also see you have a note here that says install riprap swales at each end of the culverts to maintain erosion control. Is that within the approved limit of disturbance of the wetland or not? Yes. Everything that you see there is within the approved disturbance of the, the replication area we'll be doing. Okay. So put this plan to... What, what, what's the, what was the approved limit of disturbance? Scott, do you have that on there? Okay. Approved limit of disturbance. Yeah. Wayland cul-de-sac mm -hmm. end. That's the pipe yep. that runs. And these <coughs> the arms lines here is a limit of work. That's where the box culvert is going to be, that rectangular shape with the wing walls mm -hmm. in here. Replication area in over here. Are you looking to see how good of a match it is? is, that, is that yeah, that's what I'm trying to see. So, and, and, so we're not we're not taking yeah, this is, this is all width right. here and widening it, if that's what you're asking. I guess that's my concern, that where, you, where you're installing this riprap, is that going to extend? That's the footprint of this. It's all within there. Yeah, it's right. the same footprint yeah. okay. of the box culvert. It's the, so these, oh, are, oh, these oh, orange oh, lines oh. are the approved right. limit right. work line. That. That's the, what's, oh, if you go out there in the field today, that's so what's that's, staked, that's out. staked out. Those erosion controls are in. And that's the footprint that defines this and defines this that we're in the same. It works within the staked out erosion control barriers. Oh, yeah. There's no, yeah, there's no need to go outside of it. Okay. Um, one other question was, so it sounds like you're removing, you're basically going to remove all the organics, all the stone that's within the channel there, and haul that off site? Not necessarily. We want to, there, there's a specific plan, Scott, you could probably speak to this a little better. But based on the, the repli replication plan, um, some of these native soils and, and rocks need to remain on place and be put back in their native right. we may, position. We may want to reuse some of that Yeah, that's, what I, that's what I thought the original here. plan was, mm -hmm. was to preserve all that. And so I, just, I just thought I saw a note on here that said it was going to all be hauled off site. That soil will be stockpiled on site for potential further use by Craig. Yeah, I um. This is stockpiled for stream restoration. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the bullet bullet three <clears throat> and, and stockpile for the for the plans. Yeah, I'm just gonna say this is just some more advanced on the plan left. The commission hasn't seen. The approved plans up, but it's probably the six one F. That's labeled fifty three of fifty three. We approved fifty two of those two. Yeah, so it's just a little more advanced, but it's probably that probably the same change. Change. So, Scott, somebody from our office is out there guiding what soil and stone. Because I know some of that plan, I think especially on the larger crossing, was very specific about stockpiling soil. Right. I'll, I'll go out there with Mike and his guys and to make sure that we properly, you know, preserve the existing materials that we want to use. Because typically, sort of the organics, as you know, are, you want to, you know, stockpile for as short a period as possible. Correct. Correct. Take precautions so that if you're reusing that material, that it's the value. Correct. So I guess I would, you know, it's been my only concern to make sure that that's being done per that original plan. Okay. All right, you, you will be on site, Scott. Yes. So, yeah. And then obviously I think just, yeah, you know, where you know that that main pipe is already in poor condition, um, 
I guess I, I'm just looking at this and sort of, did you guys consider sort of a more typical easier crossing of just like swamp timber matting this whole thing? Um, I mean, it, it's, it, we're only, I mean, we can consider that from the land clearing side, but um, in my personal opinion, I think it's six or one half that does in the other with, you know, row plates, but, you know, we, we can entertain that if the commission wants us to entertain swamp mats in lower road plates. That's fine. How long do you expect this to be the condition? Or how temporary or permanent is? I guess what, I don't know what the schedule is. It, like it's, the, it's a function of the lead time on the culverts. Mm -hmm. um, once we get it 100% and released, it, it does have a pretty significant yeah. lead time. Um, it, it could be. Months. We're talking a couple months. months. So we'll probably go through the winter yeah. in this condition. Yeah. Correct, and that's why we want to make it. We're calling it obviously temporary, but it's it's going to be. A long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would think the plates would be more protected than the matting, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be just the color. Well, just because it disperses the weight a little bit. Yeah, the, I mean the matting does do it. So I guess. It sounds like what they're doing is basically excavating this whole thing and getting it prepared for the final culvert and then just dropping a 24 inch pipe in that's temporary. Right? right. That's great. So if you were to just timber mat it, you could potentially just do all your clearing and not really do it, any of that excavation. Just, just lay basically a timber mat bridge across this whole thing that would allow you to get your vehicles over it without, um, without essentially digging the whole thing up. Are you going to be continuously going back and forth with the machinery, or you're just getting them over, like once, then they're over there? It it's going to involve um, a little bit of both. I mean, it, it, on the front end, there'll be machines that will just be mobilized across that, mm -hmm. um, and then while that tree clearing is ongoing, you will have um, additional equipment that will be passing it more frequently. Pulling so, all the trees out, yeah. chipping, yeah. logging out, so. It'll be active at, at, at a certain point. My concern with only doing just the matting is that if you disturb anything outside the matting, whether it's the front end or the back end, you, you have, you're disturbing the soil and essentially you're going to be creating a, an erosion condition. And if you get a deluge storm, you know, I just, we don't want to risk that boot that we have there to have any type of organics or silt that that travels through it so our intent is to to make sure it's it's kind of a, an ironclad process where we have a, a stable pad that won't have any um you know failures per se yeah, i mean i kind of agree that i think you know if i think practically having the swamp mats is is good if you're just going in and out for a day or two to do a couple of things but if this is heavy machines in and out and back and forth and you know, we're going to go through a, a, a winter with mud conditions and things like that you know we're, we're trying to Avoid a runny, muddy mess out there. Yeah, just give them permission. Yeah. Option. I think that makes sense. Um, can you can you explain the third bullet from the bottom? Install impervious soil. Yeah. Can, so yeah. So so what we don't want to happen is um, as this as this overflow area, um, we get into the the wet season and um, <clears throat> we don't want any type of riprap swales or on the ends of these pipes to leach any of that overflow water through our area. We want to create a, a, a barrier, an impervious barrier, to make sure that that water finds its way into the pipe and not on the outside of it. Okay. Um, if we were to just put stone around it, it would basically act like a French drain and, and fall on the outside of the pipe as well. So okay. we want to make sure that, that it uh, so finds its way only into the just pipe. funneling the water into, into the culvert? The Correct. Clay. Yeah. Yeah. Something you'd build a retention pond with. Sure. And then that all gets excavated out before you yeah. put in the final design. Everything will be excavated out for the footings for the permanent solution crossing. And how do we decide on the twenty four inch for the pipe? Um, matching the existing that's there. It's 24 that's there. Yeah. Okay. If we 
we can step back, <coughs> step back on the road plates. What it says here is road plates may be used. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that you might not use them? How do you judge? Well, again, we have to see the condition of the pipe. Um, we have to expose it. And, you know, if there's some some temporary repairs that need to be made of the pipe in the interim, okay. Okay. Um, you know, that's what we'll do. But um, we, we just want to present to the commission that we're going to take the necessary steps to preserve that pipe as best we can. Well, so the word may, will you do it this way or will you use road plates? You're not sure. So what's the alternative? And should you put that in there? I think it just makes We can just say yes. It's better to use them. Yeah. Better. I mean, the more the more protection, the better. Right. Well, then I would say will be used. Because that pipe right now, it's, you know, it's 75% and then here, all rotted away at the yeah. base, right? So the water doesn't even flow in the pipe. Flows goes around it. Okay, I think we're good. Um, if I can get a motion to waive uh, a portion of condition number 35. So moved. And a second, please. Second. Mr. Chairman, yep. can we put in the, the specified specification that plates will be used? Yep. So it's, you know, per the discussion that we had, um, leading up to the vote. And the condition is waived for the crossing, but not the work within the buffer zone right. on the rest of the site. Yep. Right? So this is the only area. Um, if the supplies to all the other work will be outside yep. the buffer zone. Okay. okay, so we have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Okay. And then the second request. Second request, and uh, we're taking up a lot of your time, so if you want to punch this to the next meeting, I would understand that. But it's, it's whether or not the change to the center crossing which goes from now having two abutments in the wetlands right. to a larger span with only one abutment in the wetlands, but now not in the stream thread. That's what was approved by the DEP and by the Army Corps of Engineers during the 401 water quality cert process and the Army Corps of Engineers 404 approval. That's not the exact consistent uh, matchup with the plan that you all approve with your order of conditions. So we want that to be the version of the plan that we're going to build. So we, we need some action from this board to affirm that set in order to advance it. So whether we would have to come in formally with an amendment request, which would be a butter notification, public hearing, request an amendment, issue an amendment, or if it's small enough that that could be adopted as a minor field change and accepted via a motion of the board without a formalized process of an amendment. I'll put your sense on that. Can there's a minor project change. I guess I'm a little hesitant where this is the main crossing, sort of the, the main point of discussion on this project. Um, I think it, I think it's worthy of, of an amendment just because it's it's kind of the this was the main focus of the, of the whole review of this project. Um, not to say that it isn't better and it doesn't kind of go through perfectly, but I think having that discussion um, in a more formal setting would, you know, would require notification of the butters is sort of a big part of it. You know, it becomes a public hearing as opposed to just sort of an informal hearing. Um, in my opinion, is, is that type of change is, is worthy of it. I think you document the new plans that come for you, the plans that they've done and the plans that they're going to generate. Mm -hmm. Could be working out then reviewed, peer reviewed, and incorporated. Because right now we just list, you know, the old plans. You know, so if you wanted to right. put, you know, these with the new revision date and, and then the new set of plans that you get, you know, list them on that one. Have the new set of plans been submitted through the planning board? Army Corps of Engineers? No, yeah. planning board, locally. They, they have not, no. I don't think that they don't need to act on that change, I don't think. I don't think it's just a culvert design change. It's not changing the road layout or 
lots or anything like that. It's just it's just the design of the culvert. Then it seems like it should get on the record somehow locally. Yeah, I think it makes sense to go through, you know, more of just a project change request and amended um, filing, so that it's you know formally before us. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So I think they got to go back right. with design, stamp design, structural plans. Right. To the planning board? To the planning board. Because it's not like you would go through the building part, but the planning board's the only people that would look at road design stuff. Mm -hmm. Right? Because yeah. right? for us, the structural task mm -hmm. right. yeah. They're the ones that mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I hope. Okay. So Franklin Road Solar. This is a continuation of an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation. Nick Fasendola from the Level Design Group. Uh, here with me is Pedro Rodriguez, representative from the applicant. That's just an updated aerial photo, uh, which depicts additional delineated resource areas uh, discussed at our last public hearing. Um, so back then we discussed uh, the potential of a uh, isolated wetland up in this corner of the site. Uh, we had our wetland scientists, natural resource services, go out there and uh, delineate the boundary, which is shown in red on this plan. And there's also a, a small intermittent stream, which feeds into this isolated wetland. We also added some additional flagging of an additional intermittent stream which feeds into this B series wetland right through here. That was also noted on our um, uh, comment letter from uh, Lucas Environmental. Mm -hmm. um, so we took care of that and um, went out, resurveyed the flags. We also added the record flag locations uh, that were approved as part of the um, Eversource easement work within the area of the 30 foot wide easement. So uh, we kind of compiled uh, our wetland flags and those approved wetland flags to come up with this modified B series uh, wetland. Um, all this information was submitted uh, to the commission and reviewed by uh, Matt and um, I can let him speak to any comments that uh, he had on, on the additional information provided, uh, if you'd like to. Okay. Matt, did you have any? Yeah, so I went back out to the site yesterday and walked. Um, so I, I had met um, the original delineator out there. We had talked about it, and then some of this was fairly substantial, so kind of left him to flag it, and then went back out yesterday to review that flagging. Um, and it all looked fine with the exception of um, one flag, uh, D20, which is up in this isolated area. Uh, just had one minor change of, of moving that flag out about 12 feet or so, uh, which the applicant was made aware of. And I think they were going to go out and resurvey it, presumably. Yes. So I hung a flag out there for that um, suggestion. Um, and the other flagging all looked fine. 
there is an off-site wetland area to the southwest that's shown on this in sort of this light blue color. Um, I did walk down there, and that is there. I think what, what they show is sort of an approximate boundary um, makes sense, but it does, the buffer zone does extend onto the property in that area. Um, so I think everything was good other than we'll see what the final revised plan looks like, but there is so in the northwest corner, there is an off-site wetland that has a, a jurisdictional channel that comes onto the property, and then there's a break, and then an upgradient channel of this isolated wetland. Um, and I think the, the last plan kind of somewhat showed those connecting. Yeah. And I think we need sort of better clarification that, okay, there's a break here, and from this point down is just – Locally regulated from this point up would be both locally and in state in this area. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this plan here, yeah, it looks like yeah. it looks like you got a connection Correct. between the two, and I think we're looking for a break shown. So you got a stream channel break IVW, and I don't think you get a stream channel connected to the IVW. Okay, so yeah, we can make that correction. Yeah, uh, on the plan. Like, yeah, and show yeah, it, defend the break. If there were a connection all the way through, that would make that all BVW. Okay. So that's, that's kind of the mm -hmm. significance of that. Change. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But we, I'm in agreement that there is a break there. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's with the scale, it's it's quite yeah. small uh, in that area. So we'll uh, put a note there, maybe an additional note that says there is a break. Yeah. Um, yeah in in okay. that stream channel, and uh, to more uh, clarify that area. I didn't have any other comments beyond that. Okay. Questions or comments from the commission? One question. What yes. is the date of this aerial? This is, I believe, it's 2013. And, and to the commission, I think we should require on aerial photographs to have a date of the aerial photograph and the source. Because we get a lot of aerials in, and I don't know, is this 1927? I know the building's there. But there's a big difference. So, you roughly 2013? Yes. All right, thank you. Okay, so Matt, do you think we need to continue this out or can we approve it subject to a revised plan being yeah, submitted to I, you? I think, I think if you guys are comfortable with it, I, I think yeah. it, the, the changes plan? are pretty minor that are yeah. left to be done. Yeah, okay, I tend to agree. Melissa, I care. Are you guys okay with that? Yeah. Okay, questions or comments from the audience? If I can get a motion to close and approve the resource area delineation um, subject to a revised plan being submitted, noting the changes that were discussed. So moved. And a second, please. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. We'll coordinate with uh, these guys over here and the final plan. We so can expect that in the next week. Yes. yes. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Borrego Sola, Zero Wood Street. This is a continuation of the notice of intent. For a solar facility. Good evening. begin today, in light of the significant changes that have happened to this project since we initially uh, applied, I would like to request the Commission waive previous meetings, uh, and then I'll kind of start from the top so that we we'll give kind of an overall, you know, rundown of the project, um, kind of hit a reset button if the, you know, if the Commission well, I don't think acceptable. we can waive the previous meetings, but you're certainly welcome to start from the top. Um, 
kind of give us a overview of the changes. Yeah, basically, the commission's best just said, all right, they'll look at these as, you know, a new look at, at the plans and just revise the plans. disregard the previous plans on the file. Yeah, yeah. so it's noted. I already have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Is the intention just so that we can get everyone eligible? For yeah, the yeah, that's purpose? the that's the, yeah, the purpose. There, just because you know, there's been two members attend all right. meetings. Right. Okay. So but those previous plans were very different, so that, that that's the purpose. Okay. Of that so I'll make a note. Yeah, we can start with the minutes. Yeah, minutes to show to that effect. Yeah. Great. In that case, I'll uh, just run run down really. Okay, so this is Wood Street here. You're all familiar. This is our proposed po project north of Wood Street. Um, <coughs> this page here is a little bit more of a zoomed in version. So this is the, kind of the north array. This is the south array. We are not impacting or clearing trees inside any buffer zone or vernal pool um, buffer in this area. So really all of the Kind of the discussion centers around this northern array, um, so that's what I'll just want to give an overview. Of kind of hoop house is located exactly. So that's the fact of this, this group, kind of the focus of those impacts. So the current this this layout basically uh, follows. Took a look at the bylaw, and it generally is following the, the intent of the bylaw. So we are not impacting. Um, you know, this, this green line, the buffer zone, or the BVW, are not impacting or the no-touch 50-foot buffer. Um, no structures, no modules within the 75-foot no-structure zone. Um, we do have some modules within the 75 to 100-foot zone. Um, so that's this, this layout that you can see here. This red, this kind of orange is areas within our fence um, but, and also within that buffer zone. Um, we do have this this blue section. We do have some area within the 200-foot riverfront zone, and we've offset that with this this kind of hatch is um, soil restoration area. So this riverfront impact is offset by a proposed um, riverfront restoration area. Um, it's about it's uh, I think it's 9,400 square feet. We're offsetting that at a, at a, actually more than one to one ratio, but per 310 uh, CMR, um, you know, we're kind of matching that one to one ratio required by that. Um, and the reason for that, if I could just jump in yeah. for a second, is that, you know, so much of this area is degraded already because of its use for greenhouses, nursery, gravel pit operations. So you see um, lack of topsoil and vegetation well into the riverfront area well into the, the buffer zones. So the work that we're proposing for these panels isn't a naturally forested buffer zone, right? This is a, a heavily degraded area, you know, and anything looks, you know, any variation of these kind of appearances through a lot of those areas close to the wetlands, right? So, that, so just keep that in mind that we're, we're proposing something here that at the end of the day, when, when uh, Ryan is done explaining it, well, you'll see that this is gonna be an overwhelming net improvement to this site ecologically for the wetland resource areas. Yeah. Right, exactly, and that, and that some of that restoration area is basically removing this gravel, this hard packed topsoil, you know, aerating it, um, planting um, seed mix there and allowing it, basically not touching it. This will be unmanned facility outside the fence. It's just gonna be, you know, allowed to grow indefinitely. Okay. Um, we do, you could see here this kind of purple is an isolated wetland. It's been uh, flagged. We are proposing to impact that we within our our array. However, impact is a little bit of a gray area because really there's no excavation, no fill in that area. There will be you know vegetation cutting, not necessarily clearing, but just cutting, um, and then you know a fence will be put up. And our our modules are on auger screw foundations, so very little impact. That said, for you know, just looking at the numbers, we are considering that an impact, um, and in which case, that's the reason that we pr propose these um, restoration areas, or BVW restoration areas, um, 
that Scott you know, can talk a little bit more about the replication these two areas. area, right? Uh, there, the, so these are actually uh, restoration. restoration. Yeah, there's some degraded wetland areas here. Um, so the pictures the, you have that's what, yeah, these pictures. I think this is this is one of them. Yeah. yeah. So like like for example, this area right here, that's what you're looking at right here. Right, so you these submit those electronically yeah, for the record? Absolutely. So there there's areas on this site that are within BBW, but they're currently altered and utilized. So we propose even though the IBW isn't going away, it's still gonna be there, it's still gonna be fully functional. We're proposing as a mitigation effort for the panel activity in proximity to the IBW to do the uh, BBW restoration. And the IVW area is largely kind of a meadow situation anyways. There's some some shrubs that are kind of growing in on it like that. But this, again, isn't a forest area. It's basically a leftover over dig from in a gravel pit area that's close to the groundwater table and, and such like that. So it's going to continue to function as a, as a meadow underneath the panels in that area as well. Mr. Yeah. Chair? Yep. So just one comment on this. Just... I think it's important for the commission to keep in mind that all this alteration of the hoop houses and the, these impacts within BVW and everything, none of that was ever, there's no record of any permitting of no. any of that. So I'm not saying it's not a good thing to do the restoration of it, but if the commission felt the need, they could require restoration of all this area with the landowner, regardless of if this project existed or not. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Mark. Does it, um, I didn't do all the history research. Are you suggesting that there's actually violations out there, or is it stuff that predates, you know, the, the regs and all? No, it's it's not, it basically, I've called out in his uh, comments. Um, 2005. It was, um, you've got, um, in that area. Matt, do you get the date? There's nothing there in 2001, if I recall, and there is in 2005. Yeah, there's. It's not. It's not naturally vegetated in 2001, but certainly none of the hoop houses or anything right. like right. that are there. Mm -hmm. So between uh, 2001 and 03, mm -hmm. the landscape operation in this area was it called. Now, was the operation before? Right. Was the operation before? Um, you know. Yeah, permit the area regulated. Here, the area in here predates the yeah, current they had a removal permit here there. Predate this hoop house and the landscape operation. But I mean, the, all the activity. So the gravel, you know, uh, the borrow that they got from there and anything else we're doing, that must have been done under some approval. No. No, this area predates the Wellness Protection Act. Yeah, the area above it, though. But oh, sorry, is that the area, area that's the area that we're talking about here. Yeah, right. But even up there, your pointer is that that looks like, I mean, that's disturbed area in 95. Yeah, 95. Right. All, I think all we were saying was the, the yeah, hoop the houses, houses. Okay, yeah. the landscape operation, not the earth removal work. So basically, it, this area in here, this area in here, obviously, it, there's clearing, there's the site clearing, but for the, for the hoop houses, the amount of area that was Filled to put to level out to put in the, the hoop houses. Uh, oh, well, so how much leveling was there? I mean, it's obviously cleared. I think that I think we saw evidence of this that the hoop houses were put in, you know, maybe early 2000s. But I think there's evidence of disturbance as far as obviously clearing, but also some filling and just general disturbance that predates and back even further than these, like that clearing. I think that's showing. Right. Some disturbance bill, you know, that was done probably, probably around when the, the uh, gravel operation was taking place, you know, prior to 1995. So, right. it's kind of two different things. Is disturbed the hoop houses are put in at a later date, but I think it was already, already. Yeah, and I would guess all the disturbance that's actually in the wetland for the installation of those wells that they're, you know, they're pumping the water. No, what's the, I was the, what's the trash houses, pump for? I would guess we're all, you know. If the hoop houses weren't there, I'm missing those walls weren't there. Water well, yeah. So these are, these are being pumped to waste, presumably. These wells are up in that area? Those, yes, these those are, are kind of in this general area. 
near the restoration area. So this is irrigation. Irrigation or dewatering? Irrigation? Irrig irrigation. Irrigation okay. for the... So, plants. so where, why are they being pumped out now? And where are they going? Is this a current photograph? So yeah, fairly current, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's for the, so the hoop house is a landscaping operation. Oh, it's uh, still in business. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. All right, I apologize. Right. So are those being abandoned as part of this project? Uh, yes, and I guess that's kind of the, the, the main thing I want to drive home is that, you know, currently the current situation is we have these various things going on, disturbances, you know, what we're looking to do, and, and I truly feel that we're going to remove, you know, we're going to remove that hoop house operation, remove the gravel, uh, restore this soil, remove invasives, restore this, this wells, um, and, you know, and restore this wetland area and kind of the, the end result will be a much better you know ecological hydrological situation to the chair mm -hmm. why we were sort of calling it out is because when you guys look at uh, the regs call it if you guys look at existing conditions you got a 75 foot limit of structure and 50 foot limit of work they're saying well this yeah, to if the argument was well the structures you know predate so why can't we put new structures in the place of where these structures are? Because it was previously disturbed. All we're saying is you shouldn't be taking that into account because those structures weren't legally approved. Mm -hmm. So hence you're going back to just now you're just talking the area mm -hmm. of limited work it's, is disturbed. But the structure factor. I and, I, and I don't think we're, we're relying on the presence of the hoop houses in order to justify this. I, I think it stands on its own merits that that this is a minor encroachment to, to buffer zone. But that's what triggers us to be here before you and then to offer a, quite a, a really quite extensive mitigation. I mean, so much of that area that is that has been disturbed historically, all that zone with, within the buffer zone to the wetlands is all being restored both soils-wise and vegetationally. Right? So we're creating a really nice vegetative buffer to the wetlands that hasn't existed there in decades. Yeah. There's, an argument. I mean, yeah. there's a variance request before the commission. Right. Mm -hmm. I, and actually, I, I'm glad you mentioned that because that was based on a previous layout where we kind of almost were relying on that. The fence line was closer, kind of encompassing that disturbed area, making that argument. This, like Scott said, this kind of this layout is is a lot smaller. It kind of matches the bylaw in, or the intent of the bylaw and. Really, I don't think we would need that. We don't need that variance um, for this layout because we are there are no structures within the no structure zone. You know, no disturbance within the no disturbance zone. So, so is the riverfront area that's being restored eighty five hundred square feet or ninety four hundred? Uh, so okay, so the impact is ninety four hundred. I, I think that was just maybe missing this little piece. Um, this is required by the. Fire department as a turnaround. So, this combined with this is the 9,400. This is 8,500. So that's the impact. The restoration actually with is this kind of hatch within the Got the it. riverfront, and that I have I didn't put that on the plans. I apologize, but I have that number right here. Uh, yes, 16,600. So. Well over the one-to-one -one ratio required. Not only is it over the one-to-one -one ratio, but it's also closer to the river. So we're restoring the area; it's in closer proximity to the brook, which is the intent of the regulation and the redevelopment standards. For the check, I just got clarification. So you said you were withdrawing the variance request? You said you yeah, you yes, that is. So that variance request was originally because we. We're requesting we had modules within the no structure zone. Um, this layout does not have that, so <coughs> we can. Structures in, in the IBW, and should need a variance request for that. Um, yeah, I guess it, that that is true. I, I was thinking that variance request was specifically for the buffer zone, but. Um, Yes, yeah, so I guess yeah, so that still can, stands. Can, that's all I'm saying. That, that still stands. Your variance request yeah. to take into account of new plans. 
Yes, yes. So I, I'm sorry. So that would still stand. I guess I just wanted to make it clear that originally we were, uh, you know, within kind of looking for a variance of the intent of the bylaw, and now we're, we're trying to meet it much closer um, with the exception of this IVW impact. <coughs> Okay. Um, so we have structured panels in this IVW here. Yep. And um, so that's more characterized as a meadow. It's, it's mostly, yeah, meadow or starting to overgrow with some shrubs as well. I mean, these are pictures of that area. This shows you what it looks like. But it's there because that was... Yeah, I mean, it was just... It's it, there it, as a result of whatever removals. And yeah, stuff there, there, was some, there was gravel operation here. Yeah. The soil was stripped out. This right. area just happened to be a little bit lower, collect some water, and right. somewhat the plants have developed in there over time. So it's, as, it's certainly as a result of the operation. Where on that area are we talking? Don, can you pull that down? Right. Oh, thanks. What year is that? <laughs> no, I'm, come on, man. Who submits for these dates? I think it's, no, it's to the right, Matt. It's, it's, it's kind of that, like, what happens to stand right looking area. To, yeah, right there. Sorry. Right. I would say it's so now I'm the answer. probably three quarters meadow and a quarter There's scrub shrub. The thing I'll point out that's not highlighted on the plan here is the um, 100 foot buffer zone around the IVW. So the line is there, but it's not. Yeah, we're trying to differentiate. So this is the buffer for that I, IVW, um, trying to differentiate it between from that and you know, the BVW. But um, there, are, there is some clearing here within that buffer. Were you able to quantify that? Yeah, I have that number. Seventy-two hundred square feet. Seventy-two hundred. So it's a dark spot in the middle. So there's seventy-two hundred square feet of clearing in the buffer zone of the IVW there. Correct. And yeah, it is. It is that barrenish spot, right? Right in there. Mm -hmm. That's or is it to the northwest of that? No, because you you come you you drive in, park your car right on the side of the trees, and it, 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 it's that area. Yeah, yeah, there's an existing road yeah. right here, yeah. and that road splits the IDW from this forest. Okay. So in 2014, it was all just kind of plowed over and whatnot, and it's been it's grown in. In the last few years. Yeah, I think that's origi why originally it wasn't even flagged as a isolated wetland because it is. It was pretty marginal. Yeah. I, my first assessment of it, I didn't. Well, the original plan, it was flagged and shown. Yeah. And yeah. Then it, was, then it went away and then it came back. Yeah. <laughs> Much smaller, though. Right. <laughs> right. A little smaller. Yeah. They're showing it inundated with water, Don? That's the uh, flood zones. Uh -huh. That would make sense. See, so on that's your plan, though, it shows the 100-year floodplain actually does extend and just nip into the IVW, right? Correct. Yeah, a little, a little bit here. This red dashed line is that 100-year flood elevation. And that's from actual on-the-ground survey as opposed to just a... Mm -hmm. Correct. Hmm. So 
this will, I, mean, I think the restoration rest area uh, with the riverfront seems reasonable to me. Um, the location of the panels um, seem reasonable. I think the question, or the challenge that I'm having is just the disturbance um, within the buffer zone of the beam of the uh, isolated wetland there at 7,200 yeah, square so feet. I mean, I mean the, the thought was we're mitigating for this impact, and therefore, you know, if we're impacting that well in these buffer zones would not necessarily be, you know, it, that's kind of why we're in, um, mitigating for it. Um, you know, this this is we are going to be impacting that pretty lightly. We could we are taking something that's more or less a barren wasteland right out there, and and we're trying to take the areas and that are the worst, make them better, closest to the to, to the true wetland, mm -hmm. and then adding this whole buffer zone. There's really no buffer zone that's protecting anything. So Scott, you are you characterizing the isolated wetland as a barren wasteland? I mean, it, it, it has been, Can and now look at the 2014 picture. Look at the picture today. I understand. It's, no, it's not a barren waste. <laughs> it's growing back to, 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 to the point. I mean, we talked about that. To the point that it functions as a wet meadow right now, which it does, yeah. then it gets preserved by this. We don't, we don't eliminate that by this pro program. This program preserves that full function well, of a wet meadow. Well, what's not discussed in the application of the shading impacts in there at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, presumably, it's not going to look like that in the future. Correct? It would be it would be kept low, right? So, so the, there are impacts to it, right? right? So, and, and, you're, and you're proposing mitigation, but I just right. I just don't I just think it's unfair to characterize it as a barren wasteland that you can put panels in with no impacts. For my, I'm not a wetland consultant. Um, for my own, I guess, education, and I'll look to the both of you guys to kind of help me out with this. And Matt, you first. Can you characterize the quality of, of this? If you were to rate it on a scale of one to five, five being the worst, zero being the best. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Well, I. We're in the regs. I'm not. I'm asking. I'm just asking. Uh, yeah, you know, we, you could take we, that. We uh, I'm just trying to figure out if it's a quality area or not. I can't look at a piece of land. I, I can't look. I can't look at a piece of of meadow and 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 say whether or not it's a quality wetland or not. That's not my skill set. And, and, and there's logic to call it out. Yeah, we it's don't. Quality and not. It just says, is it wet or not? Right. I guess. But what I'm trying to drive at is, if it's not considered by a wetland consultant to be a quality wetland in comparison of what we're trying to do here, are we improving the site in general? Is the question. Is it a better site after? what we do than what it is And today. I think that's kind of the approach that we try to take on this, looking at a, a bigger picture. And, and rather than quality versus not quality, I think the way the ranks speak of it more is what particular functions and values does that wetland promote for another one? You know, all, not all wetlands are created equal. Some have certain functions and values relative to mm -hmm. flood storage and wild habitat and things like that, and other ones have different ones. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, there's probably some amount of flood storage capacity in there, a little bit. I mean, it's not like deep, it's pretty flat. But that's not going to go away because we're not changing the grade of it at all. We're we keep, keeping any depressional shape to it. And to the degree that there's the vegetation is present and offering, you know, wildlife meadow functions for birds and whatnot, like, that, that, that stays mm -hmm. underneath um, the panels. So we're preserving its, its most of its function. Yes, there'll be some additional shading and there'll be some cutting of those things, but you have to cut meadows for them to stay meadows anyways. If you don't cut meadows, they eventually revert to shrub lands and then eventually forest lands. So it's not that that's the worst thing in the world to keep cutting a wet meadow, that you almost have to. And, but So for that small amount of impact, if we want to call it that, I think we're proposing an, an abundant amount of mitigation in more important areas for the larger scale wetland. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty big wetland system for a fairly significant stream system. So when we're creating a, a, an entire, you know, buffer for that that doesn't currently exist out there. Got it. How does it stay vegetated if it's got solar panels on it? So we're 
kind of where we're talking about the restoration and no, the we're talking. I say underneath the panels. Underneath the panels. Oh, so it's vegetation grows in there. So it's it's mowed, but it's only mowed three, four times a year. Um, otherwise, right, it's, it's, left. It's, it's covered. It's not getting sun. How does the things actually like? Will you talk about when you're in the isolated? Uh, wetland, it's still going to stay vegetated because it's not much disturbance, but it's got solar panels on it, it's not getting any sun. How's it, so the solar panels, yeah, uh, good point. Um, so the solar panels are elevated, so enough sunlight does get kind of underneath them because basically the design for these solar panels is we don't want to have any shading on adjacent solar panels, so they're spaced out enough to avoid that at all costs. And kind of the end result of that is that enough solar energy hits the ground, you know, between the panels, under the panels, that allows vegetation, you know, really well within the array, and then, you know, different species underneath the array, but still, still can be vegetated under there. Okay. To the chair? Thanks. Yes. So, guys, that's a question. So, like this space right here, where there's no panel show, mm -hmm. why couldn't you take one of those panels out and put it there? We, so, th the fence needs to be a minimum of 20 feet from the uh, from the modules for electrical safety issues. Um, so, you know, in order to, to squeeze that in here, we would then have to adjust the fence. And then the, the problem is this area that kind of looks better is shaded by, this, there's a cell tower up here, and that is, uh, I think, like 190 feet tall. So that shadow kind of in the winter does this um, each day and effectively negates any point of having solar panels in that area, unfortunately. It's also up on a hill, so it's even, you know, that shadow's even longer. So that's why that limit is kind of here. Same thing applies to sort of the, the other side, like going over this way. Yes, right. So there's um, the, the roadway, and then there's underground conduit for that cell tower. So we can't really push, push the fence over here, and so then we don't really have the space to squeeze those those modules in. So how critical are the four panels to your overall project? Those actually are, those rectangles aren't panels. They're, so the, recta the rectangles are, um, I don't know how many panels each. Uh, 20 to 24. So the, the, each rectangle is a rack. Mm -hmm. um, you know, four screws on each rack and then 20 to 24 modules on each one. So, you know, so more significant than it appears there. Um, you know, I guess the, the issue is that it, it's cutting out those four panels, then you know, then you have the fence set back and it ends up really shrinking that area down more than just squeezing out. You know, if we had the yeah. if we had the, you need the, the twenty feet fence, the fence. Yeah. Right. But I think Melissa, your question uh, speaking for you was how does that Deleting those racks impact the project, right? Mm -hmm. What if they're not there? I mean, At if all? it was only those four racks, and I, 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 that's not a huge right. impact. Just those four, you know, all else being the same, just take those, those four are gone. Um, that's not a, a huge impact. Done. If, if you didn't have, to, if you didn't have those four, would you need to do the tree clearing in the buffer zone? Yes, yeah. Um, that tree clearing is for this this array, oh. um, so that wouldn't really necessarily affect that um, aspect of it. And what's the square footage in the twenty in the seventy five to hundred foot with this panels? Um, the um, I don't have that number handy. I, so the orange, which would if, if you want that, that's 16,900, and that's including anything inside the fence. So 
you know, that's, that includes that 20 foot offset where it's just, um, you know, before the arrays start. The arrays are all with outside of the 75 foot buffer, but um, that 16,900 includes the entire area inside the fence. And your impact table includes these impacts, even though they're not called out on the plan, or those do not. N no, actually, these, these do. N these are not included in the tables. Okay. Um, yeah, again, the thought was typically when you mitigate, oh, yeah. you know, and isolate, you don't also have you kind of get rid of the impacts to the buffer zones. So that was the thought there. Um, I can understand. You know, both sides of the issue, but that was the thought when I'm putting together these tables. I guess the replication versus restoration is the thing that makes it different. Sorry. If you if you were if this was a replication, then I could see taking it away and not factoring in the buffer. I don't know. What are you doing replication, right? You're doing restoration. Well, it's, it's, yeah. it's because this is wetland replication area. Or is it? Yeah, I guess it's kind of a misnomer. This is more restoration. I guess this would yeah, be so like replication. This one, so the green line is the wetland. So this area here is just outside of the wetland. Yeah. That uh, one is just inside. inside of the wetland. Yeah, right. okay. Um, so it's not replication. I've it wouldn't be hard to make, you know, a little area of replication here would just require cutting out soils. Yeah. You know what I mean? So since we're already stripping soils out of this thing, it would really be no additional effort to to take something like this degraded area and do a wetland replication. You know, you know compensate for a little less here. Yeah. And we're but already stripping the thing, Melissa, your point was that if you're doing if you're just doing restoration or even if you do replication there, you're not creating any new buffer zone habitat to offset what's being lost there, right? Right. Because the question well, is, is there somewhere else on, on the buffer zone or riverfront area on the site where, the, again, it's currently degraded, they could be, have some sort of, you know, tree plantings to offset that 7,200 square feet or whatever number you want to put to it. Um, well, I think the, the, the thought behind these areas well, is where, you know, where's the best use of you know time and energy and money for this this wetland area it happens to be within <coughs> the wetland but that's because this area of the wetland is so degraded that it's i mean you saw the photos it's really it's going to benefit a lot more i feel like it's going to benefit this wetland much more to have this restored and have it all continuous you know quality habitat rather than leave this poor quality and have, you know, it a little bigger over here or something like that. Um, so I think that was the, the thought process behind it, not necessarily that it's, you know, I think this would be, the thought was that this would be the most impact for the for the area. I think even site-wise, this is, site, you know, looking at the site in this entirety, this is the area that when you walk it, you would think, you know, the protect wetland interests would benefit the most from being enhanced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you—I mean, you are restoring buffer oh, area the, the, this whole, all this whole around. Thing. I'm just a numbers person, and you know, there's numbers m missing that aren't quite accounted for, I guess, mm -hmm. on paper um, to justify one. I mean, I think it does. It is an improvement in the work that you're proposing there. We just are trying to justify losing. I think when you put panels yeah, in absolutely. it, we're losing it, right. essentially. I mean, I think, right. and, and I think I can it's, understand I think that it's a loss. As far as the numbers go, yep. you know, considering it that way. And so we, these areas are, you know, area-wise offset this, I think, mm -hmm. one, one ratio. And then this basically, you know, I guess how, how I'm thinking of it here is these areas offset this impact. This within the riverfront offsets this at actually much more than one-to-one -one ratio. Mm -hmm. And then all this restoration is actually kind of 
again, one to one ratio for any buffer and buffer zone impacts. And, and we took the approach to treat it as if this was being wiped out altogether. Is the mitigation adequate? And I, I believe it is if that never existed, mm -hmm. right, based on everything that's being proposed over there. Mm -hmm. but, so, but instead of just bulldozing it over and having it be gone all together, it's still preserved underneath mm -hmm. there. I mean, could, but I do believe as a wetland scientist that, that this is an overwhelming benefit, you know, relative to that, those functions and values if that was eliminated altogether, right? So I, I think our mitigation level is high enough. But if you wanted to see actual replication and creation of new wetlands, well, we're doing all this grading work in here. It's easy enough to scrape it down, an area down a little bit lower and actually increase the wetland area, you know, in, in a few spots to match. I mean, it's not out of the question that just by dropping it six inches and pulling that material that was in there, oh, yeah. that could all turn into wetlands. A absolutely. Right. That's absolutely not because that may have all been wetland originally. Never mind it being floodplain. It may have all been filled wetlands. So. Yep. And I mean, and really, that's preferable to the commission. That's we'd be happy to make that change. And then, you know, there'll be even though it's mowed underneath all these panels, there'll be vegetation. So we're going we're to go from you know an operate a greenhouse operation with gravel and hoop houses and everything else, you know, to basically a vegetated site across the board here. It's going to go from natural wetland to restored buffer to solar panel meadow, back to wetland buffer, back to wetlands, back to river. You know, so that 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 whole system will come back as a green space in a sense. What do you think, Melissa? Do you want wetland replication in there? Is just the buffer zone restoration sufficient? Um, I think the I think the replications fine. I think, like you said, I think it might just migrate and we'll get more wetlands than we are even shown on the plans. Um, but I think maybe if we can just account for the numbers you know actually recognize that you know that's wetland buffer impact you know what i mean you mean the buffers to this like, yeah. all, all in this area yeah is what you're talking mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. yeah so that you know you have more than enough you have more than one to one so i think it'll probably even out but yeah, if you guys i would just want to account for that we, if you can quantify that for us, just so it's a little bit clearer. Yep. Um, yeah, definitely. So just make basically this this impact here. Quantify that. Mm -hmm. um, and then also like the you, impact here. You know, you have here. it everywhere else. The orange. Yep. Yeah, we can. We definitely do that. I think you know. I'm, I think I'm comfortable with the. Proposed restoration and mitigation, um, and what's being proposed. I just want to, you know, to Melissa's point, you see the numbers so we can make sure that you know, it's justified. Yeah, I just want to understand that. It's a little bit more accurate. Does that make sense yeah. to everyone? Yeah. All right. So. Is that is that the only thing that we have concerns about? Is that something that we need them to come back for? I think so. Yes. Do the chair. I'm personally fine with the plan because it seems to be considerable improvement. I know initially there were some concerns about like where the riverfront was and it sounds like we've addressed all that. Yeah, all the wetland boundaries and riverfront area boundaries and all that were 100 percent Like that was one of my bigger concerns was the riverfront area. It seems like they've addressed that pretty well. Um, it seems very consistent. Well, oh, you can prove for other things. And I think we need to encourage this type of redevelopment for the solar projects as opposed to these clear cutting of wooded areas. Mm -hmm. A significant portion of this is clear cutting of wooded area. Not up there. Not, up Not there. in our jurisdiction. <clears throat> I get that. 
But we can only do what's in our jurisdiction. I get that. So, you know, anything that we can do to try to encourage something like this as opposed to some of the other work. But, yeah, I don't like what was previously there, but that's beyond our control. Seems like it would be a, an improvement overall to the resource areas. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Uh, okay, well, Melissa, what do you think? Would you feel more comfortable having them come back or comfortable with us taking a vote on it and then providing the data for us? Um, I think I'd be fine with um, taking a vote and providing the data pending that it you know, evens out like we expect it to. Maybe Matt can if he's comfortable looking at the number. Okay. Matt, you okay with that? Yeah, I mean, so the, the, I think Dom was going to mention something about the this is the le this is what we got with the NLI, but I don't, I don't know if you revised this to accommodate the new plan. N no, I am I am not. Those numbers are from the original submission. So that will need to be updated. So I guess the question of the commission would be that's being updated, and we're talking about impacts the direct impacts to IVW and then impacts the buffer zone. Are you considering that the entirety of the IVW? Is being impacted for the purposes of this project, or just what's just what the piles are that are supporting the panels, or just what the, the coverage of the panels is? I just don't know how you yeah. how you want to break that down because if you're going to allow structures like these in a regulated resource, I think you need to be cognizant that someone's going to look at that and come back in the future and say, "You let that project put." Panels in a resource area, or whatever yeah. in a resource area. Yeah, I can think I do that. I, I think it's the entire area. Mm -hmm. It's just not the where the poles are located. You know, the shading mm -hmm. of that. So. Right. Um, yeah, because it's the footprint basically within the fenced area that are managed. You know, whether they're access roads or mowing or. Yeah, whatever it's work it, within so it's we work. don't usually allow mowing in a wetland. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> so I think it's the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, questions or comments from the audience? Questions or any additional questions, comments from the commission? Okay, so I think Matt made a note of some special conditions um, in his notes that we would be requesting. Um, so one of them had to do with the invasive um, control methods. Just we need a specification of the length and time of the control efforts. Um, so that would be a condition. Plan. Um, just a request that there's a description of the ongoing maintenance of the stabilized entrance if it's going to be left there for the long term. forward you the the latest that August 13th is not the latest okay did that come in your packet um, here's, here's what you sent me 10 30 anywhere in here no I don't think I I don't think I forwarded you the beta so review. Right. Yeah, so yeah, it's not part of the record yet mm -hmm. yeah we need to take a look at that um, before we vote definitely Do you have it? Did you 
Why wouldn't we have received that? We received, yeah, we received the original one, but not the one that they reviewed as part of the revised plans. Oh, that's weird, though. Yeah, I thought usually that was your done. I thought you were copied on was I? on their submission, but I, I might be wrong. Either which way we still have to review it. It's kind of weird. That was through the planning board, right? Yes. Just um, a couple of the other special conditions. One was just the locally sourced seed mix would need to be specified. Um, that the seeding or the, the reseeding um, would be allowed to um, or would be conducted ahead of the actual site construction, allowed to germinate prior to the start of construction. I wasn't 100% clear on that. Yeah, that's right. Can you talk a little, because I know in your application you talked about sort of sequencing of that. Can you, let's presume this project is approved as you have it here, if not tonight, in two weeks. Yep. Um, so prior to construction, obviously the, the tenant that's currently operating the hoop houses will remove their equipment. Um, once that's done and, and we have site control, um, we'll, we'll provide this restoration area ahead of time, you know, kind of first thing, first thing to work on on the site prior to module, um, you know, construction or anything like that. We'll, we'll do the restoration steps specified here. Um, and then prior to installing this, the solar modules, we'll wait the allotted time, whatever the commission requires we suggested one month to allow that grass to, to germinate. Um, the, the vegetation that's going to be actually underneath the panel. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, I'm, I'm sorry, that'll be outside, outside of the fenced area because that's a restoration area. We are proposing to restore it within here, but I think specifically we're going to make sure this is done ahead of time because inside the array will likely get damage during construction we have to be received afterwards mm -hmm. but this outside of the array um, will be done prior yeah so I guess that's the question for the Commission as far as how long would you want to say okay it's, it's seated on May 1st you know you can start putting in panels on June 1st July 1st August 1st yeah I mean there's no activity once it's heated, there's no activity in the buffer zone, right? Um, in the restoration area? Yeah, right, yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, there, there may be some required just for putting up the fence. Like typically they'll wrap the, the fabric around, but once that's done, it's, there's no activity outside of that fence. Okay. Yeah, I think a minimum of one month. I was going to say, can you look like, is a time frame good or just a stabilized? I mean, because yeah, anything could happen in May, right? Like, you could have three weeks of rain. And yeah, I agree. It, yeah, it feels dependent. Or you could have a fabulous May. And yeah. If you were to say 75% cover, which is kind of a typical standard, I don't think would be a, a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. Okay, so let's just, um, we haven't taken a look at the, haven't taken a look at the, most recent beta report from the stormwater. So why don't we do that over the next couple of weeks? We'll just continue this out. But other than that, I'm assuming there are no issues with beta. You know, I think we'll be ready to go in this at the next meeting. All right, and in the meantime, you guys can redo the calcs. Yeah, yeah we we'll get the table I'll updated. Make sure to provide all the the numbers, and Don, I'll forward you the beta's comments. Because if I did get them, I probably would have emailed them. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I just I'll found it, and you weren't copied, so I'll, I'll also want to update it. Normally when I get it, I, then I spit it out to the members, and, and I try and download it. Yeah. I'm sorry to make sure we have the, the full list of items. Did you also want to update an O&M plan? It was a, you had mentioned an additional thing. I think oh, that, that was, was just part of the condition. condition. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, if you're offering, go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> then you would have one less condition. Yeah. 
Okay. I would not be opposed to providing, but I think it would be a more comprehensive one prior to building permit because then we have a you know, buyer in place and everything. So. Got it. Okay, so we'll continue this out until the next meeting. Which would be 19th. I'm like 19th. Town Hall. Yeah, we'll be down Hall. Town Hall. Yeah. So this is the last meeting held in this location? No, it's just... No, it's, we can't get it next week, uh, two weeks from now. So it's just a one, one off. Body time. Body time. Maybe we should tell we all decorate it. Extra food. So we'll still be able to go to the thrift shop on your way out. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> oh, the raffle in the basket is probably. No, they don't do it in December. Oh, do they? I have no idea. Because I always feel like at a first meeting, if you put your thing down, you get a little bit. But then we never have one like okay. before. One Thank, Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> have a good night. A so, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hover around. <laughs> hover around. <laughs> hover around. <laughs> Next, the final, the final vote. Final call. Oh, um, so, 19th is game with 10. Someone got all scared up for somewhere. What exciting stuff is on oh. here? <laughs> okay, Don, are we ready? Yeah. yeah. So Fox Hollow. We're in the drawing room. Yeah, everybody else is here. Lot 12. Yeah. 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 Everything going out at Fox Hollow? Pretty good. Uh, they're gearing up to get to work out there. Okay. Um, for the record, Eric Dyes, Registered Professional Engineer with Strong Point Engineering Solutions. Uh, we were here for two notices of intent and a modification about probably a little better than a month ago at this point. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, the Commission had a couple of comments on lots 11 and 12, which were the subject of the notices of intent. Uh, we have made uh, and I believe the commission at the time approved them subject to those comments being made, uh, those comments being satisfied, excuse me, and the plans being updated. So we have made those changes to the plans, and I do have copies that I'll submit um, into the record tonight. Uh, there was one additional comment, actually, from the Board of Health on those plans. It's really sort of ineffectual, but we wanted to make sure that we ran it by the commission before we move forward, forward with anything. So... On both lots 11 and 12, the original plan for the soil absorption system was a trench and trench system. So we had the primary trenches, and then right in between those trenches, we had the reserve trenches. Um, for whatever reason, the Board of Health didn't love that design in this case. I think they are concerned that if we ever did have to activate the primary, we would have to disturb this um, field wall here, which is just a PIB. Um, so what they've asked us to do is just take the reserve and move it to the opposite side of the PIB, uh, which does put that reserve area further into the buffer zone. Now that said, the reserve area, as you know, is just shown on a plan as a backup. If, ever, if something ever did go wrong with the primary area, it's an area where the system could be replaced. Um, so no work relative to the reserves would happen at this time whatsoever. I would also argue that if work, if the reserve ever did need to be activated, that work would require the issuance of a notice of intent by this board, um, and they can certainly look at alternatives at that time. The alternative would be to simply replace the system where it is, where the primary is now, to excavate the materials and re-put the system right back in that place. Practically speaking, that is probably the more likely alternative. Um, mm -hmm. Even if I had to advise my client, eventual client at the time, what to do in that case, I would say to do that. Um, so I had actually spoken with Don about this a little bit, and I don't, I don't want to speak for Don, but I don't think we saw it as the end of the world, but we thought the commission might want an opportunity to even at a condition, um, something to the effect of, you know, nothing that in the order at this time authorizes any work relative to that primary 
et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Just to make it crystal clear moving forward that that work would definitely have to come back before this commission if it ever needed to happen. Okay, I think that makes sense. Um, so we can decide um, that condition in and on. Yeah, because we have an issue. You know, it was, it was subject to revised information, and if and Eric couldn't foresee it, and then the Board of Health chimed in on this. You know, right, so right, yeah. that's why. Um, I asked her to come back in. Yeah. I just yeah. said, oh, yeah, okay, we got the rice plant ready to go. Yeah, no, I think that, I think that sounds okay to Jeff, me. Jeff, I have a yep. question. Jim. So there's an order of conditions and everything else, but we all know that in the future, from whenever something was issued, somebody gets lost. It's not recorded. Somebody forgets. The homeowner doesn't know it's there. What triggers our review in the future? Somebody doesn't you know. The homeowner doesn't know anything about any of this. Doesn't know what that is, a PIB or otherwise. Does the Board of Health looking at an alternative uh, location, a reserve location, does that trigger our review of what that would be? It would, yes. So what would happen in this case, what, for this to even come up again in the future, the septic system as installed would have to fail completely. Right. So once the septic system fails, everybody knows it's happening. Uh, they would reach out to the Board of Health. The Board of Health would then say, okay, well, we need to replace the system, hire an engineer, Right, and then the engineer would come before uh, you know would get together with their client, and they would then either file with this board, or they would choose to replace it in place or something like that. The board of health should not be issuing any permits for work on this reserve area until this commission has provided an order of conditions for that work. Yes, I would think but they would what? reach out to us. Yeah. Comments. Yeah. Board of Health. Have you got board. this application yet? Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is after we have a whole new Board of Health agent. Mm -hmm. And um, I was an engineer once. Um, I know some engineers that would, with this plan, yes, forget to let us know that there's something going on that's new. And that would be mm -hmm. foolish. Now, one thing I'll say this plan that I'm submitting to you now is the exact same plan that's going to be in the Board of Health's record. So. Any Board of Health agent at the time would go to their plan of record, which is this plan, and say, oh, look, it's in a buffer zone. Yeah. Okay. Right? So they should, as long as everybody does their job moving forward, come back here. Okay. Are you suggesting Fair enough. a note on that? No. Not at all. And again, my Just personal, that. in a sense, the reserve in this is there as a matter of regulation. My opinion, if I was the engineer who was called to say, hey, I had been told that they have a design failure, I'd go take a look right. at this and say, replace it in place. And it's likely, God willing, you're still here, that they would call you if this ever happened because you're, those are your plans. Right. I mean, right. I think most people would call who did the original plans. So. Sure. All right. Well, that's good. Thank you. Okay. So this is, applies to both lots 11 and 12. It's 11 and 12, which are numbers 1 and 3, Fox Hollow. Yeah. Okay. I think we're okay with that. We don't need the vote on it. Okay. So, right. Uh, Don, I have two copies yeah, me. of 11, 12, and I gave you 10. I didn't, the only thing that changed is they finalized the building footprint, no disturbances, nothing. But I figured if I was giving you these two to make the file complete, I might as well give you that one too. Awesome. Thank you. Just to stay up to date. As we had shown, just the generic box and the building fits within that box. Ah, and it's outside okay. of buffer zones anyway. I just figured yeah. I'd make it official. Okay, Excellent. thanks for bringing that in. Thank you all for your yeah, time. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks. <laughs> I had to make sure I knew which one I had today. <laughs> right? Yeah, so the shirt, go with the hat instead of the polo today. Right? I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. Yeah. Next time I expect both. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm just doing mascot duties. <laughs> Take care. Thank Have you. Good night. Night. Right. Okay, Gilroy, Five Stone Crossing Way. This is an exemption request. Yes. <laughs> You guys looked at the last week and it was um, that, that proposed um, driveway turnaround. I hadn't been out on the site and then I went back out. I mean, I went out for the first time after the after the meeting mm -hmm. and met with the homeowner on the site and he wanted to take into account and you know change out to um, 
uh, have it have a pervious uh, area. And when we were walking, we noted uh, two trees. So he was going to do some pruning on some trees. And let me get my phone on. So yeah. So he is amenable to the pervious. Yes. Yeah. He submitted a, a revised plan where where he's going. I can show it. Let me show you that area at the bottom of the photo. So it's kind of the uh, end of the driveway. He had issues trying to use it as a background here because of all the um, uh, landscaping uh, mm -hmm. effects here. So this was the area he wanted to put it in right at the end of this. Is that retaining wall. Yep. You can see why he can't go that way. Yep. So he's looking to just sneak it in at the end of the at the end of the wall, so you just put in a like kind of an L wall there, like a three foot, just clear this out and put in uh, pavers okay. in that area. All right. So Sounds the wall well. would be outside our purview, it would just be the pavers on on a half here. And um, he's got, uh, he, and then when I was out there, we we, we looked at our vegetation man, he's got, he's got bittersweet all over the trees and they're um, killing trees uh, now. And we noticed. That there were two trees. There's uh, this large one here and this one here that are sort of growing over the house and over the landscape area here. Um, I didn't have halfway up. You can see how structure, the structural integrity of the large tree is uh, in question. That's this one right here. I'm probably taking a picture from right in that area. And then there's just a small tree here, right on the edge of the, uh, the lawn, that he, that he'd like to uh, take out as well. And like the commission would probably want that to get replaced with you know, a, a, a native plant, um, and he was amenable to that. This one, I think, is just, you know, a yeah. dangerous tree. Yep. So, I think, tree. Just taken. so it's just those two trees. He's going to do some pruning. He's going to remove the um, bittersweet. And when it's all gone, there's going to be some open areas. He wanted to plant <coughs> in, the, in the buffer zone where it's really choked out everything. So. Okay. If you guys remember, remember that just having that one live tree with that? out of the place. Absolutely. Sounds good. Yeah, all right. Absolutely. Great. We don't need to vote on that. No. Nope. That's the person who's been struck by several And trees. then Legacy Farms, <laughs> East Main Street right away, review installation of a concrete berm. Yes. Um, I was out on the last Thursday. Um, Roy asked me to go out and take a look. Um, and I didn't know what I was looking at until I got out on the site. And let me uh, show you what I get on um, brought to my attention. So you guys remember the it's phase two of the uh, the sidewalk, mm -hmm. and um, is it a temporary berm or a permanent? Oh, post hearing documents. I think it's permanent. Permanent, right? So in front of that so-called rough person. Yeah, it wouldn't make sense if it was permanent, right? What he what he said when he had the and. The minutes don't cover it, but as you can see, he did, you know, relocate the guardrail as uh, as proposed, and he's um, looking to put in a concrete berm right underneath it, up to the, the height of these um, uh, boards. So it would it would sort of act as uh, um, basically an erosion control barrier. So when he goes to install the sidewalk, it would go up against the concrete berm. And I was like, well, I didn't see it on the plans. And he goes, well, at the meeting, I talked to the commission, told them I was going to install a concrete berm, and they were amenable to that. And I looked at the, I, I, didn't, get a, yeah, I didn't get a chance to look at the minutes until today. It didn't mention it. But I, I realized this date is, was one of the videotaped ones. So I could go through, try and look at the videotape. But obviously, if, if it wasn't discussed and wasn't shown on the plan, I assume you guys would want to do it as a as a project change request. Yeah, so I think I, so. Do you, yeah, because I was like, I don't really remember it, but I don't, I don't, I don't remember it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not I saw that wood when I drove by it, but <laughs> right, right, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, it kind of makes sense to, to it, it would act as um, a great erosion control area and to you know solidify when the when the sidewalk goes up to it. Yeah, I like yeah, the idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just be concerned about how you pour in concrete. With That's what, yeah, that, yeah, because, <laughs> yeah, I've, 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 uh, I worked for a concrete foam company way back in the day. I'm like, that was the first thing. I'm like, how are you going to prevent a blowout? So <laughs> basically, a lot of them are long enough where it's between, it's right in between these guardrails, and 
there was a couple where it was long where he'd have to really support the, the back, but the, uh, the, the boards are right up against the, uh, they're, in, they're interior to the, to the I-beams of, uh, right. of the railing. So it holds them in place. It holds them in, it holds them in place, and he would you know, order a, a firm mix, you know, and he would just sort of excavate a, a, a trench so it would, it would, and then the ground would act as the, you know, so it would just be up against the, um, the wood, and then it would be in the, then it would fill the trough. You know, so you'd have to do a lot of excavation just to, the footing. to direct to where he wanted, you know. So this essentially becomes the back edge of the sidewalk. Right. Yeah, so then the sidewalk would go up, you right. know, up to the concrete. You know, so we'd have it high so the sidewalk would be, you know, kind of right at, right at that point. Right. So it's supporting the sidewalk in between the guardrail. So but to me, if you guys didn't yeah. review, it's not on the plan. It's it's a project change. So yeah. I'll let him because he was like, "Oh no, we discussed this," and I was like, "All right, maybe you did." You know, I, I just didn't remember. I think I have conversations. But I can time. bring up the video and I'll look at that tomorrow and let him know. If you guys like to do it as a project change. Okay. That so you probably just you would probably just you know be kind of just a. I don't know how he'd write. He would just sort of write in. You know, he'd be installing it. You know, I don't know how the plan would. Well, like, yeah, some sort of detail. Sure. Yeah, show right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's what I'm sort of getting at. You know, like, it would be, you know, like kind of like a. Supposed to show plan. show it on a yeah. plan, right? right. But yeah, you yeah. I mean, you would say this is where it's going. You know, and then a side set would be like on the detail Steps sheet. And across nice. Across yeah, across that's what I'm sort of getting at. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. And the, the wood goes one. away after. Uh, yeah. uh, Jim, did you get a chance to talk to Jamie? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I've communicated with Jamie via email, and she would be delighted to uh, take my nomination. So I nominate Jamie Wonka to be our liaison to the TCMC. Second. All in favor? <laughs> All right. All right. All right. And opposed? All right. What a lovely conversation. Do you folks have any questions or? Did Zero Spring Street get? Yeah. We're waiting for Spring Street. Zero Spring Street. Yes. They, they asked for a, a condition to be approved. Yeah. 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 Yeah.